Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today, I'm looking at my VW 1.6 liter turbo diesel VW and we're doing injection timing on it. So if you have a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated or turbo diesel, you too can freaking watch along and time your injection timing. In order to do injection timing, you first need to set engine timing. If you have not seen my video on engine timing, you can see it right here. Now, as a general overview, as your engine is rotating, your pump is injecting fuel. Depending on what time it injects fuel at changes the performance of your car. So understanding how to time your pump is very important. And if you're a tweaker and you want to get the best performance out of your car, you should try multiple timing set. Now, as a general overview, we are going to set the engine and everything to top dead center. This should sound pretty familiar if you watched the last video. If you have not, we are going to put the timing mark that is on your transmission to the timing mark that is on your flywheel. That will set our entire engine assembly to top dead center. From that point, we are gonna go ahead and loosen up our mounting bolts on our fuel pump. There are four bolts and we're gonna loosen all of them. This allows our entire pump body to rotate fore and aft. That allows you to advance towards the car or retard away from the car the injection timing. Once we have the pump loose and everything else set up, we are going to move the engine backwards away from top dead center and then approach top dead center once again. All the while, we'll have a dial indicator inside this pump to set timing, measuring how far away our piston is from the end of its travel. Off we go. To do this job, I am using a 13 millimeter socket with a quarter inch drive, a 19 millimeter socket with a half inch drive, a 13 millimeter ratcheting box wrench, a quarter inch drive ratchet, a half inch drive breaker bar, and a dial indicator with an extension, and last but not least, an adapter as a dial indicator mount that fits into the fuel pump. I believe this is an M10 by one thread. So before you start turning wrenches, it's important to decide what you're gonna time your car to. I think in general, most specs are given as like 0.85 millimeters to 1.05 millimeters as a reasonable range. The bigger the number, the more advanced it is. So 1.05 mils is more advanced than 0.85 mils. And then I have a dial indicator that measures in inches and many of the dial indicators you can get will measure in inches. So I need to convert and I always write it down in inches what my measurements are. But to give us a reference point, one millimeter is equal to 0 0.0394 inches. So one millimeter of timing should be 0 0.0394. Now we're gonna take a quick look at my notes given my engine has different configurations and nothing is quite stock, but it looks like from slowest to fastest, I have 0 0.031. So that's like 0.8-ish millimeters or so. And I said, not bad. Uh, I've then also tried 0 0.037 inches, which my notes were feels pokey, takes a long time to build boost, top end feels open. And then I have 0 0.0385 inches, which is, again, that's like 0.95 millimeters, uh, and nice. And then I also have 0 0.039, and that felt peppy, but maybe too advanced. So pump timing is kind of a variable thing in the sense that your injectors pop at a certain pressure, and your pump develops a certain pressure that's enough to pop your injectors at a given time, depending on the size of the head and other factors, and whether it's a turbo diesel pump or not. So right now, because I have 136 bar injectors and an 11 millimeter pump head on here, means I have no idea what to set my timing to. But the last time I set timing with a different pump was at 0 0.0385 inches, which is pretty close to 0.977 millimeters. So just to keep that one thing the same when I change everything else, I'm gonna go ahead and use 0 0.0385 as my target timing setting because it'll give me a comparison between the last thing I was using and this thing. Does that make sense? But for anyone else, you could also use 0 0.0385 because I think it feels pretty dang good. 
but it might work completely differently on your setup depending on what pressure your pump puts out and when. With that out of the way, we can get right into it. We're gonna remove this bolt, 13 millimeter head, kind of in there. Usually it's a little, Okay, so I thought this was a 13, it's actually a 12, so you need a 12 mil too. But go ahead and crack that thing, take it off. This is your timing cover screw. Basically, it serves to seal your pump and keep fluids in there and allow you to change your timing and check it. Now, if your pump is already on the car, this cavity is gonna be full of diesel and some is certainly gonna slowly leak out of here. My pump, however, was just on a bench and completely disassembled. No diesel is leaking out of anywhere. With that out, you can go ahead and take your adapter and screw that on in. I find it's nice to really snug this adapter up. Otherwise, it likes to come free and kind of screw everything up. So now you take your dial indicator, you go ahead and you uh, get it slotted in there. And you wanna get that good and tight too so it doesn't move. What I find is tricky is that my uh, adapter sleeve is kind of kind of janky, honestly, and it tends to restrict the movement of the dial indicator shaft. So what you need to do is make sure it's in here, one, really tight, and two, the shaft of your dial indicator is still able to free play like this. If it can't free play, it's never gonna take a good measurement. Show you a different angle. Here is my dial indicator, and here is its ability to freely move. Now, we're gonna go ahead and find top dead center. Because this is a belt-driven assembly, you always wanna approach top dead center in the way the engine spins. So right now, let me get right in front of the camera. I think we are before top dead center, so perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and use this, and I'm gonna use it on this camshaft bolt, which is, you could use the crankshaft bolt, but then you can't reach it, so I use the camshaft bolt. So to start, you wanna be at or close to top dead center. I'm just looking at my pump timing mark, and it looks like I'm a little bit before top dead center. So I'm gonna go a little bit more towards top dead center to illustrate a point. So as I move the engine backwards, this needle is going to be moving. It's measuring the pump's movement. But you'll notice, at a certain point, it will stop moving. And it's not because I stopped moving the engine. Right there. See how it stopped moving, but I gave it another turn? This is our zero point. We're measuring the piston at its lowest point in its travel. So, right there. You turn the face of your gauge to zero it in. And just to show that we are indeed at zero. Very good. Now, what you need to do is rotate your engine forwards to top dead center. At exactly top dead center, we can take a reading off of this and it'll tell us what our pump timing is. Pardon me as I get right in the way. Crucial step. So I'm being very careful at how I apply force and yet it's still being pretty jerky. I'm gonna use some taps. Okay. And once again, I'm gonna sight down the length of my car. So with our engine at top dead center and our gauge properly zeroed just before this, we are now reading timing. We're at point zero, six, eight. Eight, probably eight one. So we're at point zero six eight, I don't know, on the dot, point zero six eight inches. And I said I wanna be at point zero three eight five. So we're way too advanced right now. We're quite advanced. And that has everything to do with the way I timed the engine and the pump. So now I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the pump up a bit and we'll adjust the pump to get it closer to the ballpark we wanna be in, which is right about over here, 0 0.0385. Right now, I think all these uh, timing pump bolts are just snug except this one, which I tightened a lot. I'm gonna to have to loosen them a decent amount in order to make it easy enough to actually adjust timing. Quick pro tip too, when I installed my fuel pump, I actually greased all its contacts points and sanded down any extra paint. I did so because I wanted this adjustment process to be easier and smoother 
and hopefully it is. So now you can watch that timing decrease. And this isn't going to be an official measurement yet. We haven't done enough to really know if this timing is going to be accurate, but we'll try our best. In other words, me adjusting it right now is fine, but we will have to recheck by moving the engine backwards and forwards again in a second. So we're at 0 0.035678 and I want to be at 85, so we're going to go to right there. Now watch, I bet you even as I tighten this up, that timing is going to move. And watch, because it probably won't move now that I said that. All right, I have pump timing set to 0 0.0385. Looks a little different on camera, but at this angle, it's 0 0.0385. And I have my pump tight, but I just wanna check it one more time. So here we go. We're gonna smooch back away from top dead center. We're still right on the money there. I'm gonna get right in the way again, but I'm gonna approach. Top dead center. Turn on my light. And that's pretty close. Let me double check. Not quite there. That's probably it. Looks to be. And we're right where we want to be. Thank you so much for watching. That was how to set your injection timing on a VW 1.6 liter. I hope you found it informative and helpful. I very much appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want more helpful VW videos. I appreciate you. Have a good day out there.